everyone, this is Janet Hill of the Rock Island County Health Department. Thank you for joining us. It's 3.30 p.m. on January 21st, 2021. Today we have with us Nita Ludwig, the Administrator at the Rock Island County Health Department, and Edward Rivers, the Director of the Scott County Health Department. As always, please put your questions into the chat, and after their prepared remarks, we will take those questions. Nita, let's start off with some Rock Island County numbers, please. Hi, good afternoon. Today in Rock Island County, we have 47 new cases of COVID-19, bringing our total to 11,852 cases total. We have 27 people currently hospitalized in Rock Island County with COVID-19. And sadly, we do have one death to report today of a man in his 90s who had been hospitalized. And again, our sympathies go out to everyone who has lost a friend, relative, or loved one during this time. Our total deaths are now at 290 in Rock Island County. Ed, let's talk about some Scott County members, please. Well, today in Scott County, the Iowa Department of Public Health reports that we've had 15,000 602 cases. Uh, the number of deaths is 167. That's an increase of four persons who have passed away from this disease since our Tuesday press conference and our sympathies go out to their families. Thank you, Ed and Nita. Uh, Ed, let's start off with some um, talking points that you would like to make for Scott County. Please. Okay, on Tuesday, we told you how Iowa's Infectious Disease Advisory Council, IDAC, released its guidance for phase 1B last week. Persons 75 years of age and older were included due to the high number of deaths in this age group. Also included were persons vulnerable to the risk of exposure to and spread of COVID-19 based on where they live or work. We also said that we'd received many questions about persons under the age of 75 being eligible, although federal authorities had recommended immunizing those 65 and older with serious health conditions. At that time, those persons were not included in phase 1B in Iowa. That decision was made by IDAC and the Iowa Department of Public Health as a result of the extremely limited supply of vaccine allocated to Iowa. Well, today, Governor Reynolds modified that IDPH phase one definition to include all persons 65 years of age or older, and it provided a tiered priority system for the groups other than those over age 65. Beginning the first week in February, persons 65 or older will be eligible to receive COVID vaccine. In the tiered vaccine system, first responders, school staff, early childhood workers, and child care workers are in tier one of the tier system. Tier one, uh, excuse me, tier two includes food, agriculture, and manufacturing workers in congregate settings and persons with disabilities living in home settings and their staff. Those manufacturing workers in congregate settings um, must be in a situation where they cannot social distance. Tier three includes congregate living staff and residents that haven't otherwise already been included and government officials engaged in state business at the Capitol during the legislative session. Tier four includes inspectors responsible for hospital, long-term care and child care safety programs. Tier five includes correctional facility staff and incarcerated persons. Although phase 1B will begin the first week in February, Governor Reynolds also emphasized that by lowering the age of eligibility, phase 1B will take longer to administer. The state of Iowa currently receives 19,500 doses of vaccine per week. It's estimated that the phase 1B now includes up to 660,000 persons. At the rate Iowa now receives vaccines, it will take nearly nine months 
to reach everyone in phase 1B. We can only hope that an increase in the availability of vaccine will speed the process. Our staff are already working to update our plan for phase 1B in Iowa with the uh, increase in included persons. We'll be working with medical providers to determine how best to reach the persons included. Currently, our clinic reaches out to persons in groups next in line and schedules in appointments. What groups and persons will be served by our clinic and who will visit their primary physician will be determined in our discussion. We ask that you not call our offices to ask when you can be scheduled to receive the vaccine. It takes a lot of staff time away from the planning effort to answer your calls, and we can't yet provide an answer. Stay tuned to our social media pages for updates. We'll provide information on how you will know when your turn will come as soon as possible. Until that time comes, please continue to do the things we've been encouraging. Wear a mask, employ social distancing, avoid gatherings of people outside your household, be tested if you feel ill, and stay home if you have symptoms. That's all I have, Janet. Thank you, Ed. Um, that was a lot of information. Uh, we will be sending out um, an after briefing uh, report with many of those, or all of those details. Um, Nita also uh, will be giving you a report with lots of details um, that we are hoping that you will be able to pass on to your viewers and your readers. So Nita, let's go ahead and start off with Rock Island County talking points, please. Thank you. So we are making changes to our vaccin vaccination clinics that are happening every Tuesday at the Greater Quad City Auto Auction. And again, that site is at 4015. 78th Avenue in Milan. And we're doing this in an effort to reduce the wait time and the traffic. Anybody that was out that way last week knows what an issue we had. So we are still vaccinating people in phases 1A, which is healthcare workers, and phase 1B, frontline essential workers and Rock Island County residents age 65 and older. You must now sign up for a 15 minute time interval. You might not receive the vaccine at the exact time you signed up for, but registration guarantees a dose for you in your place in line. We have 600 doses available for Tuesday's clinic next week, and we'll have 600 slots available to register online. The registration link will go live at 10 a.m. on Friday and every Friday that vaccine is available. On <clears throat> It'll be on our website, at richd.org and on our Facebook page. Depending on the supply from the state of Illinois, vaccine might not be available each week. We will announce how many doses, if any, that will be available by that Friday. Please do not call the health department to schedule your time interval. At this time, the only way to reserve a dose for mass vaccination clinic is through the link that we'll be posting at 10 a.m. on Friday. Other options could be available in the future if more vaccine becomes available. If you do not get a slot, please do not come to the auto auction because they will not have vaccine for you. You will be turned away at the entrance unless you have pre-registered through that link. Please bring your photo ID or other proof of identity when you come. To help ease traffic in the area, Rock Island County Sheriff's De deputies will direct drivers to enter coming from the east. Drivers are encouraged to access 78th Avenue from US 150 on the east side of the Quad City International Airport. Drivers who must cross the Veterans Memorial Bridge on the Milan Beltway from Moline will be directed to turn around at either 47th Street or 50th Street near Group O and to join the line heading west on 78th Avenue. Deputies will be on hand to direct the traffic. The auto auction's parking lot will be blocked off shortly before 9 a.m. and the sheriff's deputy will be posted by the entrance. Those who registered are asked to tune their radios 
to 89.7 FM once they reach the vaccination clinic site. We will provide information on that radio station about when your group will be allowed to move to the next checkpoint. Please do not arrive more than 15 minutes before your registered time interval because you will not be able to enter at another time. Upon entering, those who have registered will be asked to park in a holding area. Residents in that holding area will be told when to proceed to the next station. After residents are vaccinated, they will still need to be observed for a potential reaction. Portable toilets will be made available near the entrance and near the waiting area in the parking lot. Anyone who is not coming to the clinic, going to work at a nearby business, or visiting business on 78th Avenue is asked to avoid the area. Please do not block streets and businesses and their driveways. We believe that these changes will significantly reduce the wait times and traffic in the area, but we must rely on you to follow the directions and do not come to the site without a time slot. All vaccine at the clinic will be given to people who have registered. Vaccine allotments coming into Rock Island County still remain low at this time. Any allotment of our doses in Rock Island County must be distributed between the mass vaccination clinics and our partners who have been vaccinating people in phase 1A and 1B. These include Unity Point Trinity, Genesis, Community Healthcare, and Jewel Osco. At this point, Unity Point Trinity uh, and Genesis and Community Healthcare are focused on vaccinating groups in phase 1A and frontline essential workers in 1B. Each partner sets its own process for administrating, administering the vaccine. Please check the appropriate partner's website for how to reserve your dose. Slots at this time are very limited because vaccine doses are very limited. At this time, vaccine supply is low, as I mentioned. You may not be able to get your second dose at day 21 for Pfizer or day 28 for Moderna vaccine. If it is not available to you at that time, the CDC recommends that you get the second dose as soon as you can after that. Finally, please do not call the auto auction to ask questions because the staff there are not able to answer vaccine information that you're seeking. The health department will provide updates as needed through these media briefings on our website, on our Facebook page, and on togetherqc.com. We are grateful for the partnership with the Greater Quad City Auto Auction owner, Larry Anderson, and his staff in providing his business for this valuable community service. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed and Nita. I appreciate that information. Um, let's go to the questions now. Ed, this is for you. Can you tell us how many vaccine doses were available for today's clinic in Scott County? And then yes, there's a follow-up question. We have 250 slots available today's clinic and Saturday's clinic. And the follow-up question was, do you expect to administer all of those today? I believe the list today was full, yes. Okay. Um, and then, Ed, also, could you repeat um, how many doses you believe that Iowa, that Scott County will receive on a weekly basis? Yeah, 19,500 doses are available for use for Phase 1A and Phase 1B. The rest goes to the Federal Par uh, Pharmacy Partnership Program. Uh, I'm also advised that it's estimated that a, about 660,000 people are now in Phase 1B. If you multiply that out, it's going to take about almost nine months to finish Phase 1B unless the vaccine supply increases. Okay, thank you. I, there are no other questions in the chat at this point. Let, we will pause for a, a few seconds here to see if anyone else has any questions. Otherwise, we will. Uh, conclude for the day and watch for the after briefing media release as soon as I can get it out to you. I also owe you a case count email, so I will work on getting that to you too. Okay, I think that's the end. Thank you, Nita and Ed. 
And thank you for our media partners and um, community partners for joining us. We will talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank you.